Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a best of nine show match commissioned by Defender. In the blue color, we have Rock Generation. Indeed, we have top players today. Rock Gen is playing as Anders, and on the other side of the map, playing as Arbiter, this is P2W Scrub. So, yeah, the level couldn't possibly get higher. These two are definitely there at the top. I wish we had P2 playing more of our tournaments, but they are a big time commitment. So I can totally understand why, especially with his, uh, I believe he's in the Pacific time zone. So why he wouldn't be able to make it. Um, it it's tough when the organizer is European though. It's tough. That's me. Um... The openings look completely standard. P2 did queue up a little bit of a mini base deal. By the way, $40 are on the line for this show match. And I'd also super quickly like to thank our website subscribers for keeping the lights on for us. This way we can see. Rock takes his mini bases very safely and might actually pick up that grunt if he can chase a little bit. Uh, P2's unit obviously is faster as you can see. But on the way out looks to be taking a lot of damage. Oh, the Marine almost got it. Nice kill, nice kill for sure. And we got another subscription from Soft, uh, from sorry, sorry, Shotwind at T1 on Twitch. Thank you. Rock taking the garrison, not losing any of the early Marines is obviously huge every single time that happens. I think P2 is more opting for the double extractor tier 2 esque gameplay. That's what we should be expecting. As for Rock, he's probably just playing for Vortox, the Spartan, maybe a little bit of Hellbringers in tier 2. And from there, you can save up for the Sentinel really once you have a substantial army. The Retriever Sentinel can totally change the pace of the game, but Arbiter does have a lot of leader powers to help catch up with it. With Conduit of Rage, your units get faster. Um, which allows them to chase a lot better. Then you also get a teleport, supposedly, for this matchup specifically. And you can play as with, with the stasis mines, of course. But I think there's a lot of value in teleport here. When it comes to chasing that thing down. And the Arbiter Hero in Tier 2 is something special, too. Of course, P2 right now doesn't have a whole... Oh, he's getting camo! So he's gonna use that, I assume, to take the notes very easily. Which is, of course, totally fine. We aren't allowing node strat, which would be taking the notes without killing the sentinels and then profiting from that power income. So you do have to kill the sentinels, as per tournament and show match rules, but beyond that, everything is pretty vanilla. Eventually we'll go boom. Then these guys have a veterancy point each. The Spartan being out is gonna be a threat somewhat. Um, especially with Rock Generation not getting any detection out so far. Not even a vision tower. Watchtower it's called. But the Grunt killing the Marine, though, as it's doing the capture, is that gonna be fast enough? Oh, boy. Yep, just about fast enough, and it's going to work on decapturing the Power Node as well. Very annoying for Rock, for sure. These little delays do hurt. And the Marine gets picked off. P2 is gonna have, like, three or four Power Nodes very soon. Um, of course, he's leaving behind the Grunts to avoid the Node Strat rule breaks. And also, thank you to Venoms in the chat who subscribed earlier and is now managing the predictions for the live audience. Thank you. Now P2 is in tier 2. We're not seeing a... an Arbiter Hero being made. Doesn't even have a War Council. However, he does have double Raid Camp which he'll use to supposedly pump Elite Rangers. Dealing very easily with this infantry. Wait a second, Rock just went Jackrabbits? Is this a Jackrabbit Hellbringer build? Hold up. 
We got the rabbits. Do we have the bringers of hell or what? No, no, it's just... He's even kept the armory for later. He doesn't want to recycle it and unrecycle it. Well, you jackrabbits have a pretty easy job against uh, grunts because these grunts don't have mines. They only have cloak and these guys permanently detect. So the ability is now useless. But I think P2 has managed to get his value out of that. Problem is now rock is very easily taken back. All the power nodes. Save for two. I'm sure he's going to work on that soon enough. Now P2 pumped out three of these rangers and... It really depends how many more he will make. But I think it's time for like a handful of hunters because actually the jackrabbits are fantastic against the rangers. They deal massive, massive damage against them. But Rock did pull them back. He stopped spamming him. Now making a bunch of turrets. He's got a third generator. He's tier two himself and he's adding in garages. Considering that with Anders, your upgrades are so cheap. It's probably a good idea to go for this whole rabbit distraction, but I think P2 will just end up making hunters and then it's all good. Yeah, chat pointing out that this is really weird. I don't disagree actually, because if it was like Jackrabbit and Hellbringers, then I'd be much more sold on this, but it's not that, it's just late rabbits. Which is a weird part. Anyway, we've got Drop Turret and Mine Combo, which is looking pretty good so far, but the... Oh, the mine is just too far away. And not by much either. It was like... Wow. Millimeters away. Americans will have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway. It's funny, you guys call your units freedom units, but they are Imperial British, so... <laughs> Um, shower thoughts. Anyway, em Enforcer Drop is looking pretty good. Spartan's looking pretty not good. Gonna get run down if not for this jump, which helps, but everyone's still healing and there's an engineer up, up top. So I think P2 is more than comfortable here. Should be able to take down the anti infantry turret. There's a Warthog on the higher ground, which is helping. And I really like the anti air turret here. Used to take down the Banshees and the Engineer might even succeed in doing it. Uh, in fact, the Enforcers are going down, it looks like, but the anti infantry are just retargeted onto the Hunters, which are pretty tanky boys, so they can take it. But if the Warthogs clean up, that's kind of good enough. You can remake a turret later. And P2 is, however, establishing himself very nicely here. On his second base, he's getting a war council that, which means an arbiter is coming soon. Warthogs will get to run down a lot of these tech units, though. They are very expensive, especially the hunters. So P2 has lost a lot here for essentially destroying a turret. I don't particularly like that. The enforcer drop was helping a lot with the push, but by far not enough. And this is the power of Anders, really. Your turrets are insanely good. You got all this leftover power from your... What would be normally your upgrade spending. And you can totally funnel that into upgraded turrets. And later... Later you'll still have some leftovers for... The Retriever Sentinel, which is potentially what Rock is now thinking about. He can maybe get a hog or two extra out. But probably not necessary, if we're realistic. Uh, picking up a little bit of the blue in the middle would speed up that process. He's getting a third base, so uh, the Sentinel Rush, absolutely not the way to go for him, he says. Understandable as well, because P2 now has time to prepare Reavers. It would be probably a good idea to get a second Foundry, though. But if he has too many Reavers, then the Spartan can cause trouble, and Rock is microing that Spartan really nicely with the Viggles to dodge projectiles and also to shoot faster. P2 is essentially absolutely no power nodes. Is also in a little bit of a pickle like that. Rock suddenly just has a lot of resources, guys. He saves up. He upgraded a lot of his supply pads. And still has that. 
uh, armory back home. Not many pads are actually upgraded compared to what I expected, but he has the extra power, so he could go for it. Not a problem at all, I think. Just testing the waters. Surprised he didn't take the Reaver there with the Spartan. He has the ability ready. And here it comes. Oh, Rock is quite confident just throwing it right in there. Into three Reavers, no less. Taking out turret real quick. Spartan's running for his life. But Rock gonna utilize the high ground shooting down the air units that can spot this thing. There are no watchtowers here for P2. He's trying to get that sensor tower now. He's gonna lose his mini base, definitely. Spartan should absolutely go for the jump. That will get rid of one Reaver, maybe. Spartan might actually die. He was quite low health already, so... Yeah, he does go down. Of course, the animation will get to exactly that point every time. If he dies, so... There is that, but Rock hasn't been able to get much done with this Retriever thus far. Oh, that big shot, though. So satisfying every time, but... Yeah, that kills the Reaver pretty good. It's not actually receiving any healing, and P2 isn't pulling it back either, so... He might be losing Reaver after Reaver here. Rock will need some healing, of course. But maybe if he can just run away, that's good enough. P2 has one Le Reaver left. Not enough to chase this thing. And what do you know? We've got Kodiak. This one already has a veterancy. And as soon as Rock gets Sentinel Beacon, they'll start summoning. Nice pick off for the extractor. It's always very valuable. I think that's number three for P2. All of them on the same base. Which is a bit of a risk to be fair. It would have been nice for him to have a shield. Um, and had he gotten an earlier... An earlier third generator. That would have been more possible to do I think. Now it's just a little bit difficult to get it done. Especially lacking the mini base, and Rock is gonna make more Kodiaks in the back, apparently. Unless he's going tier 3 and making tanks, which is also good. In fact, tanks would provide some much needed damage against these Reavers. Not many Hunters left, so it's a perfectly fine way to do things. Of course, Rock gets cleaned up here a little bit, but the Spartan plus Sentinel Beacon Kodiaks can handle themselves, and even the Hunters. Can't really break that too easily. Although they do take one, one of the Kodiaks as far as I can see. Uh, P2 finally cleans up the Retriever as well. After losing many, many Reavers. A Generator. A Pad. This is painful. He even lost a turret, I recall. Losing so many Hunters. Rock is definitely cost-effectively happy with the situation. So, what's next for P2? He's never gotten the Arbiter Hero out, which is weird. Um, he's hard stuck in Tier 2, whereas Rock could have gone Tier 3 had he wanted to, but I think he spent on whatever else he could, really. Spartan will take over the Shroud, no issue, but I do think he will die very quickly to these Reavers, so... Was that the best idea? Maybe not. Yeah, he's already quite hurt, as you guys can see. Kodiak Shelling will do some damage, but P2 can kind of take it. He's got Continent of Rage, he's got the Shroud to help, he's got Engineer Bubbles and healing. This kind of composition is very hard for Kodiaks. So Rock knows that, and he's gonna pull back. He's making some extra Wolverines to have anti-air capabilities. He's got some business behind that base, let's see what it is. Uh, <laughs> double Kodiak thus far. RB should take care of it, no problem, I think. What's this? Lots of upgraded pads. He did need that. And it's still Kodiak and Wolverines, isn't it? Yeah, adding some Nightingales now. 
But the good part for Nightingales is that you can... You can spot, you can... Throw down your smokes. Yeah, Arby's gonna be pretty happy here. Chopping these guys up. Run, boy! Clean business, clean business, but is it clean enough? This part isn't clean business, I would say. <laughs> Look at those Wolverines, man. They're tearing up the air support. And without the air support, the ground units mount to the Kodiaks. P2 is gonna give up. That's why it's so important to add in Wolverines to your Kodiaks, because by themselves, they kind of get rolled over. Wolverines change everything. Here goes game two. Now, I totally did not expect this, that Rock Generation would go for Jerome. Uh, P2 and Yap Yap, much more of a normal thing. A daily occurrence, really. It's one of his best leaders, if not the best leader for him. Shopper is going to start by ramming down this Marine and taking it down, too. Rock Generation is going to deny the mini base steals, however. Despite... The fact that he's gone for a generator second, if I recall? I think I caught that. So yeah, very nicely done there. Um, making sure he doesn't make a fourth marine, which is very normal for UNSC. But if you if you skip on that fourth marine, you just make one extra, then you're easily able to afford your minis. And he's doing a little bit of cancellation juggle so that he can make his buildings on time. Whereas P2 is just not going to make the mini bases then. If he can't steal, we might as well go for the double extractor quickly. Given that Yap Yap has all these cannon fodder to pick up resources. And then he can go for the minis after. And never have to spend supplies again, in theory. In practice, it's a very different kind of thing. Obviously, you'll want to make the heavy grunts and the brute riders. Thank you very much to Scorpion Laws for subscribing as well. Enjoy the September discount. Same for everyone else. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Uh, what else is P2 doing? We're about to see whether he goes for raid camps. Yeah, there's one. And the other thing I'm curious about if is if he's going for the methane wagons. He might, he might not. I haven't seen a mine so far, and I don't see any veteran cannon fodder either, so I assume that's not happening just yet. The barracks is not yet producing because Rock wants to get the Spartan upgrade, of course. Jerome is so much better with with that. Um, like this, he can't drop in the Mantis. Need the upgrade for that. And it's a pretty expensive one, 450, but I mean, you do get an extra unit out of it, so it's only fair. Right, taking down the Sentinels. With just the two marines, actually. Rock is already moving to the next one as the Spartan will take these down faster. Still takes two shots, and it's a rather awkward spread of, of DPS, so you can't just two shot them exactly. You're wasting some of the DPS there. It's nice to guide it with another marine. So you can do one shot, one shot, and the marines just finish it. Although that way you get less experience, so, you know. So, what have we here? Two methane wagons thus far. Remember, Jerome can't just hijack them. You would need Omega Team for that. Every grunts growing in number as well. Getting the EMP upgrade for them would be quite nice. P2 certainly has the resources, but I think he's more interested in the tier 2 business. Now, will Rock be able to hold here? The Jerome is... I mean, the Mantis is not particularly high health, so just a handful of ramps are already very damaging there. Already goes down, and Jerome himself takes a lot of shield damage as a result. You would have to pop him out to avoid that kind of damage. 
Well, are we liking P2's push here? And he can go tier 2 behind it, and he's got the extra base behind it. Rock is in a little bit of a pickle, but if he can sort himself out for a comfortable tier 2... Is oh, Mastodon! That's also a good choice. Uh, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have an extra base, and I'm not sure where he juggled his barracks to, if anywhere. He might just go tier 2 after the one Mastodon, um, as he probably is interested in combat tech marines. That's probably what's going to happen. It's a good idea because P2 himself went tier 2, so you're probably going to need some nice tools from tier 2. Pop those Mastodons full of counter units. And you should overall have a pretty good time. Hunter's coming out for P2. Double Grunt Goblin coming soon. Scorpion Laws gifting the subs out, thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Mastodon number two is done. And Jerome is getting his upgrade. We'll make for a pretty strong Mantis, so definitely worth popping out for that, just to see if he can get a mind combo with it, or even just to add the unit would be valuable in and of itself. I would like to see Rock Generation get an extra base, however. I'm not sure he can easily afford it while he's building up the Mastodon count. Also wonder if he has time for heroes too, as that way he would be able to go to 60 population with all these buffs. Venoms with the 100 bits, thank you. Much appreciating the help. Yeah, we've recently posted our financials. I think I'll have to make a separate YouTube video for it. Uh, just to cover it for our wide audience what we're doing, what we've been doing on that front. But you guys are certainly helping a lot. Thank you very much. TLDR will be spending more cautiously going forward. Now that Grunt Dome just ate the entirety of the damage here. Mastodon is going to go down, hurting the Marines inside. Jerome's still pretty healthy, but he doesn't have a mind combo available, but he does have the Mastodon to drop in on these guys. One Grunt Goblin goes down the victory turret, helping out a lot here with the boosts. And that should be the end of several of these units, actually. Methane Wagons, Goblin, none of these are really safe. Snipers managed to take it down despite the invulnerability. It only lasts for, you for a few moments. Damn, P2 got obliterated here just by a handful of units. A frog, the Mastodons are truly something else. The well, time for heroes is no longer available, that's for sure. He's reaching 68 population. The third Grand Goblin is dead. The Grand inside gets crushed. By the weight of his suit. Can Rock add another Mastodon here? Would be nice for those snipers. Um, he's bringing up the Kodiak, and there's another Mastodon, so everything's in order. Just gotta be careful to not lose the snipers until then. There's the mine, but Beam is going to clean those up and. Potentially one of the Mastodons as well. Yeah, with all that Hunter support for sure. Two Snipers within. Also, Bite the Dust. It looks like that final Mastodon is also going to be destroyed. So, though Rock had a pretty good start to this pressure, now he's the one that's 
not get a third base or second base, sorry. Relying just on mini bases and what he's already got here. Uh, not very convincing, but still a good amount of units out here. Certainly won't have any huge leader powers to change this around with. He doesn't have trash dump because you typically just don't pick that against Yap Yap. These triple goblins counter is so hard. Victory turret getting dropped. That will stop the army in its track for a moment. Long enough for the snipers to take down one goblin. Very nice. Every time you can turn the yap yap around in these situations is great. If you can build up the Omega team as rock, it's gonna be fantastic. But he's so far away from that right now. He's getting out this counter army of snipers and wolverines. Which is actually really good against what P2 is doing right now for P2. The main objective would be to somehow make it to tier 3, but he's also making this very expensive tier 2 counter army, so... They're kinda stuck in this position for the moment. Nice stun on the Mastodon with the Grunt Dome. Takes on everything with him, probably, except maybe the Spartan. Button might be able to escape with the uh, Mantis. It will be tough though. Doesn't have a lot of health in there. Omega team comes in. That should be able to take all the vehicles from here. Including one of the shrouds. Oh yeah. That hurts. That hurts a lot. P2 must be feeling in trouble there. Also a lot of support units. Snipers and Wolverines around here. Uh, facing Hunters however not the easiest of things to do. Not for these guys. Perhaps if Rock can take down the Gobos, then there's a chance. So you have to take this low and he has the backup turrets. So you can upgrade those to anti-infantry if P2 were to decide to push. I don't think he's gonna do it. He's turning around, taking out the Kodiak. Nice heal! Wow, that Gobbo's almost back to full health. Crazy. Now this should make it a lot easier. Spartan and the Locust instantly getting ejected, but should have another... Yeah, hijack available, or two. That's better than one. Can't cloak it because there's elites here. And they can... they can see. Steals the Locust. That's already six vehicles taken away. So the Spartans are starting to pay for themselves. But this one's about to go down for sure. Beam! Oh my goodness. The veteran Jerome might actually die here. He's got a Mantis caught in though. No, he's not dying anytime soon it looks like. Uh, that said... Rock doesn't have a whole lot to show for himself here, but neither does P2. Hunters against Spartan, that's gonna be a slow grind. But he was already very low health, so they kind of get away with it. Um, Rock's not gonna go tier 3 anytime soon. P2 might be a little closer if he stops production for a while. He's got enough control right now, I think. So just take the power nodes, make some heavy grunts, go tier 3, get Wraiths out. Um, basically all the Spartans are dead, right? There's one of them left. So this is a good time to do it. In my humble opinion. Probably not the Banshee transition though. Because Rock has made so many Wolverines throughout. I wonder if these vehicles are upgraded. It looks to me like the Warthogs might have a single upgrade level. Maybe not. It's a war to tie. I wish you could just click a unit and see. But P2 now feeling confident enough to grab a third base. So actually going the very opposite direction of what I suggested. 
Let's see how it works out for him. Does he still need the double war council? I mean, it will be nice to replenish the goblins, which there's only one off right now. He's full population, so this is the best time to do it. Seventy-three population to ninety-seven. It will be a very impressive feat if Rock can pull this off. Spartan actually is going to complete the steal. Hurt the Grand Tome a little bit, but uh, that's the end of his life. Home's out. And we've got Spartan morale boosting the units up a little bit. How long will that actually last? Probably not even enough to take out the Grunt Dome over there. Quite problematic. Certainly has time for heroes too now. Um, or is there another Spartan here? Well, Rock just lost the base. And P2 goes, three bases. Uh, this is probably the end of Rock for this match. It'll take a miracle to bring this back. Time for heroes, Hornets, however, could be a play. Spartan morale, also absolutely sick on those things. And you can keep putting your Spartans in those. is ready and we got a stun but the locust immediately takes it out so that really didn't work maybe if the victory turrets had also landed or the victory turrets were first and the locust would shoot that then you stun the locust throw the mines behind them that might be the better way to do this very hard to get mine combos off though when locusts are around so the most certain way to do it would be of course to just Take the locust over with Spartans. Easier said than done, and very expensive to get Omega team out. Matt is killed once again. And I think. Oh, P2 is going to your free. I thought he's saving now, but. That's almost looking like Scarab money. Nah, he's, he's gonna spend on Ultra Hustle, right? Yeah. A bit of a drop. Mastodons are taking it like champs. Ah, once again, the locusts and the mines. Take us all this time. What is Rock up to? He's still tier 2. He won't be able to hold that base plan. There's no way. Spartan morale is ready, but that's probably the best he can do. As P2 will no doubt gear up to 120 population soon. Just a moment longer and he should be queuing that up. He just spent his leader power, so unless he wants to go in and methane blast this entire thing. That's probably the best upcoming option for him. Better than an additional base, better than Scorch. Speaking of Scorch, yeah, he's getting the... Okay, now he's getting vehicle upgrades as well, which is good stuff. But we're not seeing any wraiths. We're not even seeing my plus one. No, he does have my plus one. That's good. And there goes Rock's base. I, th I think Rock's dead, guys. It's, it's official. Doesn't have anything big coming out. Victory turrets are in. But short of an Omega team, even that probably can change us around. 
P2 looking extra solid and now pushing in with Locust onto this ba main base with just two unupgraded turrets. Yeah, that's tough, buddy. Look how fast the health is going down on this thing. Of course, the Locusts are buffed up by Methane and the base is debuffed by the same Methane. Rocks on the drop in Omega team for dramatic effect, but this is over. Well, we got plenty of games left in this best of nine, supposedly, so let's see where it takes us. Alright, here goes game three. Rock Generation is gonna be playing as Serena. Wow, he's making one of every building, just like in the tutorial. On the other side, we have got P2W Scrub playing as Johnny. You would have never guessed a few years ago that this particular leader matchup will be happening commonly. Well, Everything has changed. Suddenly people figured out how to optimize Serena's ice mechanics. And Johnson's bunker level 2 is absolutely insane. So people are using that heavily now as well. Just a natural evolution of the meta there is now. Essentially no leader that is staying unused. Um, I guess Pavium sees not as much use as as some of the others, but even he is not bad. We, we still see Pavium here and there. And Vordis is allowed in this show match. You can play him without uh, combat spoils, but everything else is cool. Double Cryo Trooper push. Let's see what you got, Rock. I think he's gonna upgrade this extra pad, of course. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to maintain this triple unit pressure. But this is a big rush. I do wonder if P2 is even ready for this. He's gonna have Sergeant Johnson, Johnson out. And supposedly a defensive bunker, maybe, if you can afford it. Uh, the mission for Rock would be to freeze these two supply pads. That is where P2's lifeline is. So if he can get on top of that, then great. Of course, going for the super fast hero here means that the uh, cryo troopers just face a kind of brick wall. Very tough to deal with. Uh, P2 preemptively puts down the the healing beacon, which I'm not sure about that one. But hey, as long as it keeps sticking around. Oh, he's moving the hero out into the bunker. It was a trick move the whole time. Man, that Johnny is gonna get... ...pretty strong from this. We've also got the ice blocks and... Uh, ...the advanced... ...the cryogenic advances, that's what it's called. But Johnny is now... ...full shields, full health... ...or, uh, upgraded health, rather. He looks to me like he can maybe hold this if P2 micros him well. Surprised he didn't stay inside that bunker. I guess he doesn't want to deal with the explosions from the ice. And yeah, they will eventually explode. Goes back in now. After he's used up his shield. There's the one jackrabbit as well, hugely helping out. I'm surprised P2 never actually made a turret. He's just holding with his Hellbringers and the Hellbringers are more damaging than the Cryo Troopers. So they're better at killing if there's nothing to shatter the frozen units, which there wasn't. Good hold by P2. I think he's stabilized. He doesn't exactly have a bigger income than Rock, however, unless uh, this is staying up. Is Rock going to go for it? No, 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 he's going into the main again. No way. Yeah, this is a desperate attack if I've ever seen one. How many cryo troopers are we talking about here? Maybe 12? Yeah, something like that. Uh, P2 has seven Hellbringers and a Johnny. I, I favor P2 here, absolutely. Oh, there's more back here? Wow. Now turrets, of course. And they're digging in.
double mini base for P2. This is a disaster for Rock if he allows this to happen. The Bison is now coming out. But is this a last ditch effort or something? Very well looks like it. Now I like that Rock is reducing P2's income here by chilling the whole thing. He's also looping around some of the Hellbring uh, some of the Cryo Troopers. The Icebringers. And that's gonna slow down the income in the base. Man, if he had done this from the very get-go, might be a different kind of game. And the infantry turrets now in. So with that, I think this base is absolutely nothing to threaten it no more. Maybe the ice cream truck. Maybe that. Because that one can actually deliver some shatter damage. Well, it doesn't look like anybody will freeze on their way out. Except that one Hellbringer, but it just dies. Quite some damage coming through on, on the Bison, actually. Problematic for Rock, for sure. As P2 can just throw down a bunker. Oh, he's in so much trouble, man. This is looking like a P2 game to me. Wow, that smart missile is so smart. <laughs> a Raven? A Frost Raven, in addition to all this? I don't know about this rock. He's getting another generator, but on the bright side, he's got quite a few cryo troopers taking care of the mini base. So that's cool. Peter just gonna expand and chill. He's no is in no rush to do anything right now. He's very happy to just slowly progress in this game. Doesn't need to go and kill Rock, not even in the slightest. Uh, look at this guy, he's upgrading a second generator now. We have Peter's going tier 2. <laughs> Off the back of uh, the two power nodes that he's captured. It's not going to be too difficult either. And he's going to steal one. Ooh, that's big. Frost Raven is going to stop that, but the decapture still hurts. And we've got this. As I said several times, the Hellbringers are at an advantage here. Seeing as they do more damage. Ooh, actually the Bison might be able to shoot this down. Rock will probably need to opt for a Restoration Drones to heal up this bad boy. Actually, it's a girl. We've got garages coming out. A second armory for P2. What? No, no, no. That can't be right. Yeah, we've got two garages. So I assume just Mantis. A little bit of Wolverine action, maybe. But that was a bunker level two. I like that a lot. Hey, we got a subscription from Captain War Games. Thank you. Much appreciate the support. Dog Generation upgrading his base to tier 2. He's got an expo himself, and he's now gonna be able to double prompt the Frost Ravens, upgrade the Bison, add in some Nightingales later. This could be a composition that P2 needs to respect. Certainly, the Mantis won't be the answer. It has to be a mix of Wolverines and them. If Rock can reduce the income of P2 by taking over this mini base. Maybe he can turn the game around still, but... You know, once we get to the free building stage of Johnson... I kind of like his chances.
That said, late game Serena is absolutely terrifying and Johnson just... I'm not really sure he has the toolkit to deal with this. He does for now, but... There's a point at which the Ravens go a little out of control. Might even need to add in Marines. Still looks like the normal beam. Not upgraded. I would be surprised if Rock didn't work on it soon. Kodiak's getting added in now. And SOP2, I'm surprised he didn't yet get the third base. He's coming in now with the Hellbringer squad. Nice poke with the Mets. I like that a lot, taking out the Kodiak. And... What? He just used the... Defensive EMP Mech Blast. But these units are already frozen, so I'm really surprised that... Rock didn't... Capitalize on that and shatter everyone. Guess his own... Units were quite weak already. But now that there's more Kodiaks, you can... Gently push out here. Never upgraded this base. He's saving for tier 3 or something. Doesn't have any Nightingales either, so I don't think he's gonna commit anymore to Frost Ravens. They're a distraction to uh, generate a big Wolverine army for P2 that then can get destroyed by the Kodiaks. That's what I feel like he's trying to do. Uh, P2 going for that third base, and I'm pretty sure he's got that generator for free. that kind of time anyways. So like a lot that P2 has a scout on Rock's third base just in case. He knows about the other one. So staying ahead here. Generating a lot of these free buildings. He can produce a lot of value like that. The drop turret is such a good play here. When the units are already chilled and slowed. You stun them. You make sure they get even more. Kodiak shells on them. But those Frost Ravens have to be careful. As most of them are destroyed now. Oh, oh, oh! Lots of shatter damage coming through from the big drop from Rock. That hurts. That very suddenly can turn the game around, of course. We've got the two tanks and maybe a little bit of healing on top would be very, very nice to see here. Uh, the Mantis far out, but the Kodiaks will finish them off. There's essentially nothing left here. Rock might have just taken this back. Johnson, not particularly good against Kodiaks himself. The bunker gets frozen and eventually shelled to death. P2 will have to do well to take out at least a few of these low health units. I think he's targeting the tank. I'm not even sure he can take that down. And no, he can't is the answer. Rock has kept this Bison alive the whole game. Everything is dead for P2. Rock can go tier 3 and keep going with the tank game. Um, there are a lot of turrets here. But so long as Rock just is happy to chill here and set up the, the Bison, Kodiak down the turrets, that will be pretty quick. Still shocked to see zero Nightingales though. Uh, the huge Kodiak spread is able to cover pretty much everything except... The shelling of this base. Still not a single air pad. Oh, that's an air pad. We're good, we're good. False alarm. P2 about to lose his mini base, but he does have the third base. So that's pretty nice. See. Upgrades this, he's gonna be able to start making extra generators. It all adds up. That was such a good drop from Rock and completely turned the game around. I really hope for his sake he keeps his tank alive and heals it up or something. It's 
suddenly not looking so bad for Rock at all. He's a little bit behind in the eco department, but if he keeps taking engagements like this, he doesn't need eco. He doesn't need to remake his army over and over. P2 does. So even though he gets free buildings, that's just a small component of his overall economy. The entire army costs way more than a handful of generators, too. Uh oh. The global rally point betraying P2 once more. And that Colossus. Well, the bigger they are. Blah, blah, blah. Immunity isn't gonna save these guys from the chill, but Rock isn't shooting the Mantis. Luckily for P2, they would have gotten frozen during the whole thing. Uh, EMP Mech Blast hits the Nightingale and Frost Raven. Good catch. Good catch by P2. He's producing quite a bit of value here, pushing through the Kodiaks like that. And, you know, he's got a little bit of healing left back here. The Kodiaks actually can't see that far. So Rock now, once again, has to respect it. The Colossus are going to be troublesome longer term. So if P2 can produce a handful of Nightingales to go with it, it's going to be wild. These boys just need a little bit of healing. That's it. Oh, it's it's happening. Sorry, I missed it. I wish we could always have like these little boxes of what's going on up. The production queue. Man, just a little bit of extra time for Halo Wars 2. We could have had so much good stuff. Maybe it's not too late. Eventually, this game will turn 10 years old. Halo Wars 2 Definitive Edition, huh? 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 Yeah? In the Age of Remasters, surely that makes sense. Alright. The Kodiaks, man. I don't think Rock can do much about it right now. Uh, sorry, the Kodiaks can't do much about the Colossus, is what I'm trying to say. Has the big switch back into Frost Ravens. We're still making Kodiaks. What? These guys don't do much damage against these. I'm really shocked to see him continue doing that. Sure, the icing is nice. And maybe this time we can trap them. Now nah, he's got five of the icicles, so that's pretty good. Oh, he freezes the bombas are through. Pretty decent shadow damage coming through as well, but it's not enough by itself. The bunker getting put down so that Johnny can just chill in there. Is it warmer in there? I wouldn't know. Anyways, the Colossi are trying to take down Rock's base. Will they succeed? The Kodiaks are starting to shell now that they've been redeployed. Uh, Bison getting picked apart by the Colossi, however. And they're freezing themselves over, but they kind of got out of the ice. So the next few steps, they'll be fine. Keeping the base stripped from turrets. The Watchtowers do build really quickly, so... Uh, that is something to keep in mind. But yeah, this base should be toast in theory. MP Mech Blast coming through for a boost. It will improve their armor, but the Shatter Damage actually doesn't care about that. It's just not negated by armor. I'm pretty sure. It's just flat. Oof. Rock loses the base, P2 is looking pretty good overall, his army is undeterred and that once again didn't carry through any shatter damage so the tags will be annihilated 
by the much superior Colossus, who are now invulnerable for a second there. Vulture gets added to... For dramatic effect, mostly. It's not really needed here. Johnny is very comfy in the garrison there. Bison's probably not gonna last very long. It keeps running into Colossus again. But there's only like four Colossus? That's not a too terrifying number. There's one anti vehicle turret. If there were two, then we'd be talking. So much ice getting thrown around. Rock didn't spread out the icicles, however. Well, that's a big freezing zone. That should guarantee that the big boys get frozen here. Ooh. What? Oh, they were all gonna come back. I think Rock gave up here. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, everyone, everyone was gonna come back due to combat salvage. So, P2 takes another game. Well, 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 it's not an Isabel Gamer rock generation in the blue color here. And on the other side of Ashes, we've got P2W Scrub going with also Isabel. It's crazy. Captain Morgan, thank you so much for the gift sub. Much appreciated. Now the Yodestler can spam meta place and molds. Uh, Jackrab is coming out and supposedly we'll see quite a bit of that. Uh, that's the second Jackrabbit from Rock, in fact. It's enough to push away P2, of course, with his lone Jackrabbit. Didn't send the Marine together. That's that's a, an interesting little dynamic that I think is worth talking about for a second. So you send in a Marine and a Jackrabbit, but that means that you're not gathering from two locations and overall your pathing is less ideal. Move out. P2 just is happy with the smaller pack of power, but he gathers on location with marines. So in theory, he should have more resources, even though he ends up with less uh, power. As a result, Rock will take both of these power crates. But P2 should be ahead in supplies and overall timings on the mini bases. So we'll see how that works out. The game isn't decided by some timing, he should be fairly comfortable, but if both go tier 2 into Warthogs, it's gonna be of course quite different. So, double generator from Rock very early on. Uh, P2 also has his second generator, which is why the minis were so late. P2's was a bit faster, but not by much. We're seconds apart here. Armory. So, not Vortog game, at least not straight up Vortog game. Rock will put on a little bit of pressure, and I assume P2 will do much the same, but a little bit of infantry play before go. Oh, no, no, no. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. P2 might be skipping to T2. What else is Rock gonna do? Yeah, handful Marines. I think this is just for capturing the power notes, so. His T2 might be a little slower, but thanks to the, the power nose, he can kind of catch up. It's all looking good. <laughs> Does Isabel not win this? Genius question, <laughs> Defender. I, I think Isabel is pretty balanced in this matchup. Holy. <laughs> anyway, uh, power nose getting taken by Rock as spoken about. As the prophecy has foretold. Double turret for P2 is so careful here. But he is clicking up to tier 2 and as long as he can hold on to his mini bases, shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
Rock is spending a significant amount of resources on this Spartan, of course. Very far away from tier 2 himself, but eventually the power nodes will catch up his economy. Question is, can P2 take back these power nodes once he got Warthogs? Spartan is of course a huge threat with Slam and Mines to the Warthogs, and uh, he's setting up a bunch of Mines. That's a weird placement for them. Would have expected a different direction on that. Oh! P2 sees it though, and he detonates one. Nice. Marine was gonna die anyway, so why not? Got a bit of wiggle on the Marine, but it's not enough. And Jackrabbit shoots it dead. Here it comes. Marine, uh, marine grenades? Hold on, I didn't notice this. He's cosplaying color. Watch this man add Cyclops next. <laughs> he needs to play vehicle, Isabel. We're playing like the cool kids here. We have Cutter at home. Upgrade coming through, that's tier 2 for Rock. Of course, Alice's chain gun upgrade makes her a beast. Gaining veterancy on Alice is one of the main things that Isabel is really known for. And once you get level 2, that's really where she starts to shine. It just starts destroying absolutely everything in no time. So oftentimes snowballing games too. Now, we'll see how these Vortox can perform. We've got two of them on Rock's minis already, and that number is about to grow to a lot more. That's five, six. Are these real? They seem real. From P2's view, so yeah, they are, in fact, real. They've got a lot of Marines coming across. Rock is getting said chain gun. But that weapon does specialize in anti-infantry roles, so I'm not that convinced about it in this particular matchup. But if he can catch us at the Spartan, that's a pretty good play, I would say. There's a chain gun. There's the jump. Does he go after it? Oh, yeah. Oh, he actually manages to get the full hit and stun. Chain gun versus chain gun. It was in, but it's not enough by itself, right? Now, that's the holo decoy one. So P2 is kind of wasting his time for the moment. Can he get this base destroyed or what? Rock is not making uh, Cyclops right now, but I would love to see it, as it would be in a timely fashion too. And my game is um, frozen up. No, we we're good, we're good. Whew. Every time that happens, I freak out though. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely going down. None of these Warthogs are fake, so even with a Mac Blast, uh, Rock would not be able to save it. Oh, with the heal, baby! Nah, P2 is like, nuke that from orbit. Oof. Yeah, that did not work out for Rock. The jump also missing. Maybe I'll get a shot off on the Warthogs on their way out. Maybe he can plant some mines here. Uh, while the Marines are looking. Oh, it didn't work out either. That would have been so cool. Sometimes there's a bunch of clips, I believe, on uh, Yodesla's channel of people just popping mines there in the middle of nowhere, knowing that the uh, army is going to walk across it. Especially with Vortox, it can be so satisfying as the mines are hard enough to detonate them fully and get the kill. Time it right can be super satisfying. Now, P2 has taken over two of the mini bases of Rock, uh, working on the third one, and Rock has done the same, but his less mobile infantry is now starting to show the weaknesses of it. And the reason this works with Cutter, but not with I Isabel so well, or any of the other units, see, to be honest, is just the raid leader power. 
plus the ability to constantly keep dropping in. Isabel doesn't have drops. So that's a huge weakness in that sense. You do have mech blasts and stuff like that, which is good, but... You know. The ability to drop in veteran Cyclops is a pretty key thing for Cutter. Uh, that makes him viable against these vehicle leaders. And his infantry is faster as well, so that helps keep up. I don't know why Rock got out of there. Oh, for that, of course. Getting a nice slam, but didn't do nearly enough that... Oh, she survived. About to turn to finish her off, so... Yeah, it would have been better to stay in the garrison, I would say. Maybe he'll go tier 3. Maybe he'll get that tier 3 Alice out. And put all his hopes into that. I'm not sure what other play is available, but Pitu is playing out of his mind today. Just super solid, just doing the right plays, playing macro. I like everything about the things he's doing in this show match. So solid. And that's really the descriptive word for him, solid, I would say. Doesn't take any huge risks. He doesn't rely on gimmicks. Just does the right thing and does it consistently. Oh. <laughs> Such as running over the mine with the board songs. That's not the right thing, but uh, anyway. Maybe I spoke too soon. Rock's just getting marines again. I, I I don't like it, guys. I think the time of the marine has ended. Angel Vortog is here. Goshogs? Ooh, I'd... Uh, I'd invest right now. Bye, bye, bye. No? Oh, that's good. Not against marines, but... In general, the late game Hornets of Isabel are insanely good. Obviously, you have Mac Blast to nuke any Wolverines that stand against you or Marines for that matter. But in addition, you also have Heavy Metal, you have Healing, you can even steal stuff of it goes in the machine. So you've got a bit of it all. Nothing else major coming up right now, but P2 has all the mini bases on the map, so Rock's definitely in a bit of a pickle. Mm, that's the least you could say about this situation. I think P2 now is saving up for the population upgrade, or maybe he'll upgrade the generator first. Doesn't really matter either way. It's close enough, I think. I think just to keep everything smooth and going, you might want to upgrade Pop first, and then the gen, but. Splitting hairs. Splitting hairs. The Marines are taking so long to take down the mini base, it's just not viable, man. The Vortex is so much faster at this. P2 just happily chilling. Now getting reinforcements. Having a third base. Probably upgrading that next. I'm pretty sure he's gonna have like mech 2 or 3 by now. Considering that he's against marines, there's no sense in going for uh, the other powers. Why is Rock's army that small? He's, he's got no other production, that's right. None of the buildings here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's see what that does. I think P2 is preparing for it. It's gonna have a lot of Hornets. And moving Hornets versus the... Thingy Magic versus the Condor Gunship? That's gonna be pretty good. I think he's smelled it from a million miles away. The lasers on that thing just don't really hit this. Good job by P2 taking down the mine so Rock can't just annihilate the Vortox here. I bet that Alice is probably toast now. That's a faster Vortox and 
opponents just run it down. Never really had a chance. Now, let's see what this Condor can do. Tell you what it can't do. Can't do the superhero landing. It doesn't land at all. Absolutely useless. It must land somehow, but... Does it break the turrets? How does that work? Okay, we're gonna have a mech blast. A double mech blast! But, Hornets. Did not feel the retaliation mech blast at all, thanks to the heavy metal. And now, getting a bit of healing. Hornets are not weak whatsoever, so I'm not sure why Peter is running away, but I guess he wants to max out against this. <laughs> yeah, Rock's chest base is melting, and next up is the Condor. Now, that can help out, kill all the Marines. <laughs> um, I would say put that on the base, it will be a quick job. Using the Mech Blast even on the Spartan, it barely did damage. That's actually really weird. Uh, P2 now getting his own army stolen as well. And the Wolverines are doing a number to the air units, but once he gets them back, should be able to kind of take on the rest of the stuff here. Oh, P2 actually jumps out with the Spartan to stun his own stuff. Well, you know what? Rock actually producing a little bit of value with this. He's keeping the holograms and everything. Got the Spartan v Spartan action. But I don't think the Condor contributes enough here to really help out. Especially once the Hornets start coming in. Rock doesn't have any healing, keep that in mind. The Spartans basically toast. The Marines could heal the Condor a little bit. But they probably won't be doing that. So the next move should be not to make Hornets, but... Uh, a little bit of tanks and a little bit of Vultures. The tanks for the Marines, of course, and... Uh, Isabel tanks are pretty crazy in general, right? So there's really nothing that you can lose by doing that. And the vultures, well, it takes like five or six of those to get rid of the condor with the nuke ability. So it's also a big step forward. But now Rock manages to establish this base. Is he gonna turn this into a late game match? No way. Nice Spartan slam on the Marines, silencing them completely for a moment there as they're stunned. Peter mostly using the Hornet attacks on the base, not so much on the Condor. Not getting vehicle upgrades? I'm surprised by that. But the Condor goes down and he resigns. That was exceptionally loud. But P2's victories demand nothing less. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Rock Generation is picking his main and best leader. This is him playing as Cutter in the blue color. And on the other side, we have got P2W Scrub picking up Colony, which is one of the best picks on Mirage over here. Now, Rock taking the damage from the Grunt happily and uh, just picking up the yellow. But P2 hasn't been around with the chopper, which is normally the thing you want to be doing. Reason being that he stole the mini base and now he can wiggle the Grunt, take the resources with the chopper. Doesn't manage to take the mini base, however, but this is a big investment by Rock, so if P2 were to make a raid camp over here, which he's not doing, funnily enough. Um, I think the... The rush on the main of Rock would have hurt a lot, but he's getting a Spartan now, so... You know, that's quite defensible. P2 will have to build a larger army, and... If he goes for... Oh, the main is actually making the Goliaths, that's interesting. Plus kits. 
Enzel have three mini bases to power this economy, whereas Rock is limited to two. So economy economy wise, this is the same, but it costs Rock a little bit more to get this done, uh, and he's not gonna have as much production. Also lost the marine, which is where the where the cost really comes from. Marines and Hellbringers, not snipers. That's interesting. Well, I guess making the Hellbringer leaves the option open for you to get grenades if you need it. Say you're going up against mass choppers, you're gonna want that. But Goliath and Skit, you probably are gonna want to opt for snipers. Man spending all his resources trying to capture power notes as fast as possible. Not using the garrison trick and leaving a little bit of blue behind. That's definitely pricey. Here as well. A P2 takes a long way around with three Goliaths trying to hit the base, the mini base actually, while Rock is off doing other business. Like the power notes. And there it is, we got some very beautiful animation resets on the Goliaths. Block Generation's mini base won't be lasting terribly long against this. There's absolutely no defenders here. Although he's looping around his partner, it looks like. I think catching one of the monkeys over here. Whee! Off to the main. There's another Goliath there, by the way. Two turrets. Certainly not unmanageable, but with Rock getting that extra jackrabbits now to counter this as well as a sniper. Seems good, seems good. I think P2 is holding this for the Goliath drop to coincide with everything. And having made enough mini bases, I think he's feeling confident about the timing. But the snipers starting their attack. Spartan has a star. Oh! Rock was just ready to make a second gen. Well, that's not gonna happen. Jackrabbit gets destroyed by the combined power of the Goliaths. And the skits on them. It's actually just one skit. Heavy supply pad will be destroyed also. But Rock is now dropping in the ODSTs to try to save this. Not gonna be possible. But the Goliaths still go down nonetheless. Wait, 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 he's following it up with more? There's an anti-infantry turret here already. I don't think that will work. Oh, also P2 running over mines and into Spartan fire, uh, sorry, uh, sniper fire, plus the Spartan working on the mini base there. Oh yes, these flip back around, try to handle the Goliaths, the heal, keeping them alive long enough to take down the generator, it looks like. Oh, man. He even took out the mines. He didn't actually take the mines directly so very clean play by p2 he prevented the double gen he killed the other gen and one supply pad and generally slowed down rocks ability to take back the map given that the odsts never happened there now p2 is trying to sneak a base which rock is actually unaware of and if this goliath can take down the hellbringers he will stay unaware for a while longer but Seeing no units from P2 and no tier 2, he's gotta suspect that there's a base somewhere. And he sees it because there's a sniper up here and he can see that there's no back slot. Timing wise, everything checks out. I really like that he's mining specifically these locations where the units will ideally path if you just send them in front of the, uh, the mini base over there. Taking over power node number four and number last. Can P2 hold with his three turrets until he reaches the ultimate point? 
Even big drop from Colony, however, cannot really stand up against the Spartan and the Cutter big drop. So you're gonna need a shield, you're gonna need your own hero, and Hunter Capitano is nowhere to be seen. Rock has too much map control. I think he's gonna snowball if we're being honest with ourselves. Yeah, the reason the big drop doesn't work out in the open is because the Spartan just steals a Wraith. Then you drop in your ODSTs as well as your uh, Cyclops drop and maybe even a Terror drop depending on how long things are gonna go because P2 is not gonna easily afford that drop anytime soon. It's possible Rock will be on 6 point by that time considering how many mini bases he's taking. He's taking a full extra base as well. Um, he doesn't need tier 2 to beat this. Good catch on that elite, but there's more where that came from. We've got the turret drop as well, so no Cyclops, but the turret drop will do the same thing just fine. Raid camp doesn't quite get destroyed, and I'm pretty sure that this engineer will be able to help a lot here, but the ODST swoop in from the back and take it down. So with that in mind, suddenly not looking so good for P2. He doesn't have any saviors coming up. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Spartan slamming on the Susa Grant, one of the best counters to that unit. And we've got two stars on the Spartan now. P2 gives up. Rock gets a little bit closer to reclaiming the series for himself. Maybe P2 needs to go back to Forge. He still has that. Rock Generation is going to be playing as Shipmaster here in the blue color on Frontier. And on the other side, we've got his opponent, P2W Scrub, also doing the same. Looks like the Grunts will be matching themselves on both sides. But they are pretty quick at picking up resources, so... Eventually, Rock will have to leave here, as I don't think the sharing will work out. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Rock pulls back pretty early on this side, but P2 does as well. So it's very rare to see anyone lose units. In this super early phase of the game, Rock gets a forward mini base. P2 does not, uh, considering that he went for that power extractor. Understandable. The matchup is usually defined by mass ghosts with shields at least in the early game, but there are ways to play around that. You could technically go for grunts and engineers with the hero or not. You can even skip the hero, uh, but if you have it, it's nice. You can go for power nodes with that kind of play and kind of equalize your situation. You don't even need to get cloak, but you do pay for it with the slot for the, for the apex. P2 also got the front mini base, and it looks like it will be an even split as usual. Nothing crazy happened here. Just sharing the power on both sides. Vehicle shielding coming in for Rock, and I assume that's going to be the case for P2 soon as well. He's getting some ghosts out first, so I'm not sure if the build is quite as clean. Rock managing to hide the fact that he's making ghosts for a moment, and maybe he's locking some bases down. Uh, no, they're not locked. They will pop out just fine. They have shields immediately. Rock gets the scout off. This base is locked, however. So P2 is hiding the fact that he's going ghost, but his back mini base is so much later. Bunch of ghosts there. Numbers aren't looking bad for either side, really. The P2 is a little bit ahead. But he's unshielded. Shields are coming now. And depending on the Sentinels, it looks like... 
Some of these aren't gonna be full shield, so if Rock does strike early, there might be an evenish trade. Otherwise, I'm thinking that P2 has outnumbered him. Oh, that's a nice kill by P2 right there. Might snowball rather hard, but you never know with these ghosts. The pathing isn't the most reliable. Of course, if you control them very carefully, you can babysit them so that they don't overfly and whatever. So for pad upgrades, we got two. And three for rock. So in terms of resources, he should have more than the ability of P2 to pump these units, but so far P2 has a numerical lead, which is really all that matters for, for these fights. They snowball fast and then you have everything left over. I'm not sure that the extra pad is going to help Rock very much right now. How does he deal with this? P2 is happy to trade one for one in this state. And Rock is pretty broke anyway. Ay ay ay. Uh locking. Five Seven ghosts, maybe Rock can do this with seven ghosts plus whatever he unlocks, plus the beam. That seems doable. This is a choke point after all. Look at that, P2 can't really split here. Because he will just end up in the face of the ghost. So the beam gets rid of the pressure at least, if nothing else. But P2 still is the master of the, of the power nodes. <laughs> One sentinel's alive there, but whatever. Not a big deal, it's it's basically dead. There's no double generator for rock. Oh man, that's a huge problem. He upgraded all his pads all across the land, but he doesn't have a second gen, and P2 does. He's gonna go tier two first, and once he does, he adds in like what does he add in? Mostly hunters, it should be, I think. That should be it for this mini. Rock going for the counter attack. He knows he needs to do something. Uh, turret is gonna come up, but... It's gonna take a long time to finish it. Rock has a lot of units over there. And P2 knowing to leave behind just a few to finish off the mini. Doesn't he still have beam? I think he does. Just waiting for the ghost numbers to build up. He's also killed a ghost on the way in. Cutting off the reinforcement, always smart. Rock is just gonna buy time, but little does he know, it's actually P2 who will benefit more from that, still. Well, he does know, he has seen the double generator, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna see now that this is upgraded, so there's that. Oh, his ghosts get caught as well, this is very rough. P2 is such a huge, gigantic lead, he played this super nicely, and I, I like that he controlled himself in the way that he didn't over upgrade his pads before he was ready to go tier 2 well now he's getting a third generator and he can very easily add hunters and once the hunter count reaches like 3 the ghosts are no longer useful units oh my goodness what is this mess <laughs> uh, rock kind of ended up doing so much splash damage here that he's almost evened up with p2 that's the crazy part but the hunter comes in, and that will change everything again. Beam coming in for P2. Painting two of the ghosts dead. Three of them. That's a good beam. Uh, elite? What? Why? Rock is going to you too, I guess, but... You definitely want to get at least a second hunter against all these ghosts. Ooh, Rock is gonna have the the soup drop. It's full of soups. Uh, 
Not the dish. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, all the ghosts are gone. Damn, dude. That's brutal. And now P2 can just chase this down. Feeling some pretty nice damage there. Oof. Honor Guard coming out. It's a good addition to the army P2 is currently making anyway. But he'll mostly need more elites to be able to beat the other one. Maybe a reaver or two for the engineers. Doesn't look very good for Rock. Not even close. Hunter's gonna die. And really, the play for P2 from here is just max out on this counter army and go tier 3. Get some Wraiths in. Although he's not gonna need it. Got a second base. We just go hard with tier 2 and add locusts. This current army doesn't do anything to bases. So Rock is relatively safe. Suicide Grunt. Did not expect that, but the engineers will out heal this anyway. Okay, now Rock is getting his own ranger army going, but he's spending everything he's got on this, so... That means he can't really make a new base. I like the addition of the ghosts because they deal very nicely with the engines. Uh, sorry, with the elites. P2, however, getting a third base already, knowing that he can afford it. He's done so much resource damage, might as well just put his own resources into that stuff. Plus, this is upgrading, so lots more income coming in soon. Is he gonna make a freaking fourth generator? He could. Let's find out. Rock is in no rush to attack him, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Fourth generator. Wow. Alright. Shiojin in the back as well. Dude just broke the bank a little bit, but that's okay. And the ghost, like I said, a nice tool to take care of elites. Especially when Rock has this many elites himself. It's looking good, but uh, oh, oh, there was a displacement. But followed up by Rock's beam, P2 had to split. Those are. Wait, that's not. The ghost must have been teleported out. And these got displaced. So P2 knows that he doesn't have the army right now. He's gonna respect this. But at the same time, he's getting up free bases, so who cares? Uh, might go tier 3 right now. Surprised to not see a base shield here. It's gonna be super easy for him to add Wraiths momentarily. He's currently making a bunch of Marauders just in case. Well, I don't think he'll super need that. There's P2's beam, but Rock sees it coming. Has a decent split against it. As long as he doesn't lose the hunter, it's cool. Don't need that. Even though this army by rock is really nice, it cannot handle wraiths. This guy can, but not several wraiths. Those can, of course, capture. All the power nodes for Rock, which is really his next big play now. A little bit of blue left on the map. So definitely worth picking it up as he needs to catch up with four generators. <laughs> He's lacking one still. That's crazy. After all this time, and P2S shielded bases, and his mass spamming wraiths momentarily, and reavers. 
Adding reverse, of course. Always important. P2's base is discovered. And Rock is now finally on four power nodes. P2 is gonna take the last remaining one. Might as well. He was just chilling with the army anyway. And... Starting to farm with the hero, of course. That's a tier 3, I think. Uh, one Wraith destroyed. Nice job by the hunters. Is that a displacement or a teleport? I think it should have been a teleport. Seeing as Rock just used his beam a while ago. Doesn't have access to it right now. And overall, a pretty good position for P2 to be in anyway. He lost all of his his uh, elites, however. That's not good. That is not good, but with all these vehicles, I think P2 is more than comfortable enough. The Reavers have taken down essentially all the engineers. Rock calls in some more. But it's just the elites and the hunters and the engines here. I think he's gonna get torn apart. That is rough, my dudes. That is rough. You see, P2 has engineers of his own, and he basically loses nothing. Bringing him his fourth victory in the series. Whoa. That's wild. Oh, we're on the wrong side. Let's go over here. <laughs> Rock Generation is in the blue color, playing as Forge here on Vault. A pretty standard pick, of course. The mobility and the vehicles work well together. Well, P2 is doing the same. These guys are really of the same mind on pretty much every pick except a handful. So, lots of mirror matchups in this series. P2 and Forge. Well, they're besties. So, I'm pretty sure he's happy about this. I'm not sure if Rock is as experienced in this matchup because P2 has just played. Thousands and thousands of Forge games, I'm sure. Nobody's rushing to the side power. Rather, everyone is careful with the minis. And we've got the double gen. Makes sense. I figured they play tier one a little harder, but. Haha, <laughs> Vortogs, Vortogs. I'm saving so much power with Forge anyway. Uh, thanks to rolling economy, reducing the upgrade costs of these gens. It's uh, 300, you pay 240. It's a pretty big deal. So, 50-50 split overall. Rock takes this mini, which could be a big moment though. Maybe he can use that to take down P2's mini over here. Remains to be seen. But yeah, Rock is on his last legs. P2 can... P2 needs to only win one more. That's all that Rock's got. It's either three wins in a row, or P2 takes home 40 bucks. Jackrabbit can't possibly be two Marines. Especially with that Wiggle Micro that P2 has. Very nice. But the additional Marine can turn it around. Still wiggling. But yeah, that's the move. That's the move. You pull it back a little further and then you wiggle it. But the Marine get, does get to pick off. Pissing off the Sentinels here wouldn't be too bad. That's exactly what P2 is going to do. Potentially killing this rabbit. Oh man, it doesn't work out. <laughs> now Rock is pulling the Marine away. Much as he can. Sentinel's helping him a little bit, but they decide it's time to turn around. Nice little skirmish here, I like this a lot. P2 ends up losing it, oh my goodness. Well, the Jackrabbit is a higher value unit, and there were many, many uh, follow-up units anyway from Rock. P2 loses the Jackrabbit, are you kidding me? That's basically a starting army gone. Rock has made the Fort Chaga, I assume, from this mini base. And now getting Anvil around, no doubt. No, 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 he's going for the faster tier 2, I guess. No rush with that. Oh, he does have Anvil around, okay. He does have Anvil around. 
Got the middle minis. Whereas P2 has the side minis. So Rock technically has more buildings, but P2 has the faster tier 2 because he didn't mess around with the Forge Hogs. So it's gonna have a few real hogs. Oh, there's the Forge Hog. Yeah, I just did that during the uh, tech up, I guess. Now Rock taking power node number two and moving on to three. Might be able to actually take that. Uh, his tier two is coming in, but by the time he gets there, P2 will actually have a lot of hogs. Minus one, of course. And he's now aware of this one. Good use of that marine. Detonating the mines, very nice. Rock getting a garage up front. Typically a good idea. Marines will be capturing the node, taking some damage from the Sentinels, but eventually taking them down. That's a lot of four dogs. <laughs> I don't think Rock can save this. Maybe he's not going for an anvil round, but probably not. It's definitely down in the count. P2 just keeps going. I think he has built a good lead for himself now. Would be possible to take down the Marines as well, fairly easily. Ooh, doing so much damage to that four hog. But he lost his own shield, so starting to suffer some of his own. That's a big fleet of hogs, though. I'm pretty sure he's gonna teleport across here and threaten the rock space. As just as it upgrades, too. Okay, no teleporting. This is just as fast, I guess. Maybe the mini is more interesting as a target. Interesting to see P2 keeping the armory going just in case he loses a forge hog. He's soon ready for tier 3. I wonder if he's going in that direction or if he's more interested maybe in... Uh, what? Kodiaks? I'd like to see P2 expand, but maybe he's more eager to just put away the game. And the series with that, by the way. Which, in two hours, beating Rock in the best of nine, that would be pretty epic for him. Nice catch on the Cody Axis is really not gonna save Rock, I don't think. Uh, but maybe he can get an Anvil Round plus Scatter Bomb combo off. Uh, it's not the best Anvil Round, so P2 should be able to get away from this just fine. Of course, a big part of that is P2 smartly separating his units and making sure that his Portox take a lot of space up. So that Hamel Round can't catch the entire fleet here. More and more garages having to be built by Rock. He's going to your free. Off of two base. That could spell trouble for P2. If he doesn't start doing some damage soon, he's got tier free for himself. He's gonna get his. Uh, Goss Forge Hog upgrade and Heavy Metal actually came a little late so the damage was already done when it came through there's no healing here bear in mind whereas Rock does have some healing but P2 catching these units is very nice for sure uh, Rock being in the same tech level is also huge I would like to see some turrets from him as the power will basically go into upgrades from here Ooh, nice catches with those mines for P2. That was all good stuff, and now the Kodiaks are coming in to provide some long range CJ. This Warthog is upgraded way sooner than that of Rock, 
I'm fairly sure he's gonna have Anvil around momentarily ready to go. He's gonna want to save it though. Oh, he didn't save it. Uh, now that Kodiak's a smoke that can't shoot, the Fortron gets taken down because there's a lot of firepower here. Rock's going to heal his army up as well just to make double sure that he can keep continuing. He's got his own Goss Fortrog, not normal Goss. The Peter's army is suddenly melting away. He's definitely overcommitted on the one base and didn't manage to do as much damage as he was hoping for. And now this Fortrog is just an absolute Giga Chad tank that's getting healed again and again. P2 doesn't have any significant defenses at home. And I think Rock can just take him down. Very nice way of getting back into the series. I was really worried for him for a sec, but uh, when P2 didn't stick around to finish off the base, that's when I started getting the inklings that maybe Rock can cut ahead there. And that nearly 3,000 resource difference is all that was needed. How about even more mirror matchup? Rock Generation is playing as Atriox in the blue and so is P2W Scrub. But he's red. Ay ay ay. Now we've got our Viggle Micro. This is one of my favorite parts of the game personally. This chopper grunt stuff. The chopper really likes to prioritize the grunt over the other chopper even if you retarget it constantly but rock gets a little bit ahead in this and p2 ends up having to chase that grunt getting health damage done to itself but he's got more health on that chopper so i think he can take the trade should be fine uh, maybe he can mess with the sentinels if rock comes a little bit too close So far, P2 is doing such a great job, and the Ram will take down the other chopper. He secures himself the power. Rock has to send a second chopper up to take this back yet once more. P2 looking to buy one of these mini bases, and he does get it done just in time uh, before Rock comes in with the final Ram. Now, the build orders at home would have been uh, quite normal, but P2 actually went for the second power extractor, whereas Rock. Uh, is going to go with hero and buying up more minis so this gives him the opportunity where he can pump out the hero get the raid camp up in the middle and bully down this mini and then follow it up with additional bases tier 2 and be in the same kind of economic position that p2 is in so p2 his play would be to uh, sort of get somewhere with tech 2 and fast maybe jump roots maybe it's all about the chosen he keeps changing his mind that went from a raid camp to a to a council to a harvester so he's now all committed fully to tier two place even down here nothing there blockchain will have four mini bases very soon and hero and the ability to take all the power nodes in the map As I said, P2 doesn't really have much left here. So he's completely reliant on that tier 2 switch. He's gonna have that more upgraded hero. So that's one thing he can do actually. Just get rid of one of these harvesters and uh, get that going fast. Although he won't have the power, so never mind. He's gonna go for a third generator plus the expos, both of them. And this Chosen is coming in to try to scout the other one. Rock has a rally point here. He's checking out the main. Good job with the choppers too, but the turrets will take care of it. So the best thing you can do right now is to prevent the bases from coming up. He's got mines over there, uh, but nothing on this thus far. A raid camp is being made to keep reinforcing this, and I think Rock is going hard on the aggression. So there will be many, many more units coming across very soon. 
Okay, P2 is as a result not going to make that third extractor, but instead going for that hero makes a lot of sense. He should be able to upgrade that relatively soon as Rock is spending now all his power into literally anything but teching. Man, if I was a unit and Halo was 2, I'd probably not want to be a jump route, despite that jetpack looking hilariously fun, but who wants to go into melee here? I mean, pretty much everything just dies, so... I'd want to be Kaboom Scarab, I think. <laughs> That's the safest thing. What would you guys want to be? Let me know in the chat and YouTube comments. <laughs> oh no, he's got the pea shooter gun! Hey, in the FPS games, this is actually pretty good. Why does it have to be so bad here? Now, to be fair, the Atriox has chosen is one of the last heroes in need of a buff. Smart choice to have the Shroud with him so that he can block the shots of the other Chosen. P2 can reclaim a little bit of value here. Game's not over, but mm, Rock is in a really good spot right now, and all these uh, brutes just keep slowing down this Chosen. Best thing he can do right now is to hopefully detonate these mines. Oh, oh my god. Well, 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 all the minis now belong to Rock. This is about to be bought up. He's getting his own expos. So P2 suddenly has absolutely nothing on the man. Shrouds is the only thing that Rock doesn't yet have. <laughs> Kaboom says he also wants to be the, his own scarab. That's good. Alright, P2 is trying to heal this base, but we all know that's never gonna happen, so... Uh, free engineers! Okay, okay. Maybe I'm... I'm willing to be convinced about this one. Sounds good. Never forget, -y. engineer healing is pretty wild. So the mini base will be not taken over by P2 anytime soon. I don't think he can do anything here, really. He can chase away that Chosen, but for how much longer? I mean, Rock is also in tier 2. Just a matter of time until he upgrades his own Chosen. Uh, the Shroud does change up that dynamic a lot, though. So he needs one of his own. But he's already shooting for tier 3 with Wraiths. And one Shroud isn't going to stop that. And by the way, we've gone for every single map thus far. So this is the pool all dried up. If Rock wins this one, P2 has to re-choose one of the previous maps. Up to him. And then we'd get our 9 game best of 9, which is really the ideal thing. But Rock now going tier 3 and Wraiths and Reavers, I assume, so he's looking pretty damn good right now. 
not much that P2 can do other than making hunters, which could be okay. He's also got some uh, brutes with dark skies, so maybe that taking back of mini bases thing that I said will never happen might actually happen. One star on the chosen by rock, very nice. Maybe you can get to two stars. Of course, the hero is far from unkillable. So many hunters coming out. This has gone really chill, this game has. <laughs> We'll be here a while. But Mass Rave can kind of deal with hunters. It's just a matter of having them supported with engineers and shrouds. So once that is in, in place, I think the hunters can do just fine. Plus, don't forget, beam is available and stuff like that. Uh, the rifle barrel chosen can do a lot of damage himself, especially against the brutes. The melt. The engineers will pop them right in place, though. Okay, there's four raves. Can P2 actually push this? It would be crazy if he can. But look, Rock does not have a shroud to shoot down chosen shots with, so that's a pretty big deal. Now, Rock's chosen can see through all this, and the mines doing a little bit of damage here, but looks like P2 is just gonna back out. Very understandable, but what happens to these hunters now? If he runs, he's gonna lose all three hunter squads. That is devastating damage right there. And it's not like he can use anything too major. Okay, he's got a beam, but has to cancel it as Rock just teleports forward. And takes the big fight. He's got a beam of his own right into the middle of the hunters, but P2 has a pretty good split. Until he doesn't, and all the hunters get hit at the same time, followed by the engineers. They are all evaporated. Uh, but the uh, hunters still manage to deal with the uh, Wraiths. It's looking good overall. P2, is he gonna have a shield? It's late. It's very late. He's making a turret first, too. So I think that Chosen is very happily gonna chill here. Take out every single hunter and farm the veterans for days. Oh my dog. That is wild. Now, P2 also doesn't have the support of any flyers. Nor is he going to because there's two Reavers here. The Reavers and the Chosen gonna take down his own. And what does he do after that? Nice! Viggles managing to dodge one of the shots. The Chosen is so hard to Viggle against, though. You have to do it at long range, but even without that, I mean, Rock is just. So, rock solid here. Wiggling the Reaver now, and P2 has to give up. We've got ourselves a Game 9. Ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing. Game 9, this is exactly what we're here for. This is why these two needed to be invited to a show match. My god, this is so good. The last game, the Decider game. Number 9, Rock Generation is pulling out the Arbiter for this one. Makes a lot of sense. It's one of his best leaders after all, and Rift really suits him. Well, P2 is no slouch either, though. I mean, he's played an equal series against Rock, right? And he's got Decimus for himself here in the red color. Also a super solid leader overall, both on the map and in this matchup even. I like the Decimus idea a lot, because your hero can beat up Arbiter. Right? Arbiter's whole idea is that he can sprint away. Well, guess what, Decimus, both of your heroes just pull him in, and two heroes are better than one, right? You also got these massive, uh, massive constant buffs that are almost as good as Conduit of Rage itself. P2 gets off a steal. And maybe he'll get a Vortex combo with Brutes. It's something that I would like to see. The Chopper against the Elite readers, also a very powerful early game tool. Of course, once the ghost numbers start climbing, it's much tougher. But against Decimus, do you really want to do that? 
You're gonna have those siphoning grunts with mines. I don't think you wanna go ghost here. Maybe ghost Sui would make sense, but that's a hard commitment to, to tier 1 where Arby doesn't really shine. So go tier 2 instead with the double extractor, but be careful when you do. If that chopper sees that generator from... Uh, happening in progress then he can vortex it and destroy it and immediately as rock figures out that yeah there's a raid camp coming um he backs out of this whole idea and makes a war council and turret instead so we're gonna have the tier one arbiter which is not one of the best heroes mind you but it's okay it's not one of the best maybe he can send it across the map and snipe p2's extractor that would be a huge play would love to see that p2 Never got his back minis, so... Oh, he's baiting! He's strategically baiting Rock! He knows that there's gonna be this turret investment now. So he just swaps out the raid camp to a harvester. Oh my goodness. Arbiter is gonna come across the map though, and that could be scary sauce. It's also going to be Enforcers. Rock is risking it all. Uh... P2, as long as he makes units, man, he's super fine in this situation. I would like to see some turrets from him. <gasps> he's making an extractor! This could kill him! This could kill the man! This is absolutely super risky. Arbiter is already out, right? I'm pretty sure... Yeah, yeah, there he is. And we've got enforcers coming across the map. P2 sees that, but... He has to cancel that generator, dude. Oh my goodness, that's such a big investment right now. When he doesn't have units, that could have been upgraded choppers right there to try to keep this army at bay, which doesn't have grunt mines. Are you serious, P2? Capturing the power node on the way to the base, of course, makes a lot of sense. Build up those numbers of enforcers and wait for the arbiter upgrade which i believe is currently on the way yeah halfway done p2 now getting a turret but rock might be just satisfied with a mini base pick in the back now he's got the uh, two grunts here which might be just about enough to take the sentinels might not be uh who cares he wants to micro on the front let's see what he can do Three, four choppers, that's kind of manageable, but there's gonna be suicide grunts as well. And if they can stay away from that RB, everything should be okie dokes. Where are the damn health bars? There we go. <laughs> Sometimes it just breaks. Well... The Mexican gen is toast. There's just no way. Oh, the RB gets away from the Vortex. This is huge. This is ginormous. Very well done by Rock. Nice micro. And P2's Mexican gen is toast. Team respawn has cringed. It's normally quite viable, but not like this. Uh, we've got a little bit of siphon action coming in. Does Rock have a... Wait, he used mines right earlier, so... Probably no follow-up to this. If he has plasma... Plasma bolt, then he could destroy these choppers very easily. But I think the hero already does it! Oh my god! Oh my god, he just did it. P2 has to tap out. Man, he had Rock on the ropes but the man wins three games in a row that that's what i said earlier that his leader pool is so deep you must respect that and therefore rock generation remains officially one of the best players of the game right that's how this is decided in the ring absolutely brutal well played and thank you very much to defender for arranging this show match with us and uh covering the costs thank you we want to thank our MetaPlace website subscribers. Your contribution helps us keep the project sustainable. As we reach higher subscription goals, you are helping us cover more and more behind the scenes costs, such as video editing. Check out our subscription page using the link in the description and remember to collect your perks. We will see you the next time.